Revolutionary War, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, and World War II. All of these wars require people like you and me to leave their families, their friends, and fight for our country. Now, imagine you were a soldier the night before preparing for battle. How are you feeling? You don't know what tomorrow will bring. You don't even know if you're going to survive. You're replaying and imagining what might go down and how you're going to perform. You're having a complete mental battle before even reaching the battlefield. You're marching towards the battlefield, silently waiting. Now what are you thinking? Where will the enemy come from? Where will their position be when you attack? Are you prepared enough? You could have fought a hundred battles before this one, but are still unprepared about this battle's outcome. You start to fight. What are you thinking now? You probably aren't thinking about how unprepared you are or what you're going to be doing tomorrow. You're just a focus on giving it your all. Now, I know most of us in here aren't preparing for battle, let alone a war, but these are not the type of battles I'm referring to. We all face everyday battles. Some may be big and more obvious, while others are small and subtle. Each one of these battles grows our characters and we grow as human beings. Some may be small, Oh, sorry. Some may be, these battles may be physical, while others mental, while some will be a mix of both. Now you're probably all thinking, Taylor, where are you going with this? Get on with it. Well, I decided to test both my mental and physical toughness, and what better way to do that than go on a run? Wow, most of you in here know, over the last year, I have developed the love of running. Through the journey, I have figured out it is not always fun. It actually sucks. A lot. But that's why I love it so much. The accomplished feeling you get when you finish a hard workout is amazing. I'm sure you've all felt this in some form in your life. I had a vision. Not a literal vision, but you get what I mean. I had just recently read Run the Mile You're In by Ryan Hall. For those of you who don't know, Ryan Hall is a famous half marathon runner in the United States. The crazy thing is, he is local. He lives just right up in Big Bear. In his biography, he talks about how the fact that he found his love of running and how God became his coach. At the age of 14, while in his parents' car, he had a vision. He felt he needed to run around Big Bear Lake, and he did, with no experience whatsoever, and it changed his life forever. I thought to myself, Ryan Hall's life is so inspiring, and I could relate a lot to his life story. So with the motivation of needing a topic for my senior project, I decided, why shouldn't I do the same thing he did? Here are the moments before that eventful day. Regret. Feeling frustrated and upset. All I can think about how is everything might go wrong. How I might get hurt and ruin my cross-country career. How I might have blisters so big my feet will fall off and I won't be able to train. How I might get hit by a car or fall off a cliff. <laughs> how am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to run 15 miles at 8,000 foot elevation for three plus hours when I've never ran more than eight without stopping? I know my goal is not to do it without stopping. But even running, walking 15 miles is a challenge. This is how I can argue that the mental battle is harder than the physical, because the mental battle, you can feel, think about the physical aspects. Physically, your body is stronger than you think, but is your mind stronger? What's scarier than that? I don't know what the outcome will be tomorrow. Maybe I will die. But at least you'll get to read how I was feeling that terrible night before. And if you're lucky, maybe I captured some great footage for you to enjoy. Please play it at my funeral. <laughs> this is quote for quote what I was feeling that night. Thinking back, I was being overly dramatic. It did teach me how important it is to be prepared. I had no clue what I was in for, but that's what made this journey a memorable one. The next morning, I woke up not feeling anything but the fact that I wanted breakfast. I made a delicious bagel with jelly and almond butter, egg whites with ham, and a tangerine. Then I got ready for this painful adventure. We drove around Big Bear for about an hour, trying to figure out where we were going to run. We stopped at a disgusting porty potty to use the restroom, and then continued the search. <laughs> we finally came to the decision to just park and start our run adventure at Alpine Trail, and see where it would take us from there. I had no clue where we were going to end up, I was just expecting food in the end. <laughs> this is my experience attempting to run around Big Bear Lake. <laughs>
so that's what I'm doing. I'm almost there. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're not trained for it, it just wasn't practical for us at the moment. Sometimes it's important to know to stop. I wouldn't count it as giving up. I went up to Big Bear for an adventure. I achieved that. For the curious minds out there, I did not end up running 15 miles. <laughs> In the end, we left with only six miles under our belt. You may be thinking, what happened at mile six, Taylor? Well, the first three miles went great. At mile four, we came across the Star Observatory, as you saw in the video, and we hiked some rocks to reach it. From there, we ran slash walked the last two miles to the car. We hit a wall. <laughs> Someone who was running with me wasn't quite feeling it that day. <laughs> I'm just joking. My dad, if I didn't mention before, was the one running with me. Not only did he put aside a Saturday to go to Big Bear with me, he did it even though he was feeling sick. We both crushed those six miles, though. <laughs> Still, a part of me is itching at the bone to get my butt back up there and complete what I started. I am confident that in the fact that one day, with more training and preparation, I will have indeed completed the track around Big Bear Lake. I learned and was reminded of some life lessons around the way. One, preparation is important. Sometimes I just personally don't really like to prepare, especially if it's something I know is going to hurt. I just like to be surprised and go with the flow. This was just unrealistic for this trip. Although I do think being spontaneous is a good thing, it is good to be prepared. You can even do a little of both. Two, listen to your body. There's a difference between tweaks and aches than actual pain. It is really hard to tell the difference while you're running. Mm. Your brain is trying everything to get you to stop. You need to learn the difference to be able to push yourself to achieve greatness. Three, running is totally a mental battle. How far are you willing to go on just pure will? The more you try to ignore that little voice in your head telling you to stop, the louder it gets. It is important to stay positive. Tell yourself you are strong and you can do this. Remember, you're not alone. Everyone hurts when they're running. It's just, it's not supposed to be easy, and it isn't. So find comfort in the fact that it's not just you in pain. Each day, every mistake, challenge in life, there's something to win or lose. 
You may lose some battles, but it's what you choose to learn from that loss that'll make the difference. Our minds are powerful, and you can use that power to either build you up or destroy you. I use the example of running to show a mental and physical battle, but we are all living in these daily battles. You may be conquering your battles physically, but are you ignoring them mentally? I can't stress enough how powerful your mind is. It can make or break your output in life. Your mind can be your best friend or your greatest enemy. But remember, it is okay to lose some battles. We are human. Thankfully, you can lose some battles and still win the war. What are you going to do to conquer these daily battles? Taylor, that was a great speech. You brought me back to my track days, but my race was a minute, so <laughs> so not the same. Uh, ten words or less, what is your takeaway from the experience? It is important to be prepared. Just mm -hmm. um, Excellent. And I'm curious, as someone that ran much shorter races, there, sometimes we do something called self-talk, where we talk to ourselves in our head. You mentioned it was metal. And you're in the quiet times when you were hitting that wall or pushing yourself. Did you have conversations in your mind? And were they just in your mind? Were they out loud? Were they both? And what was the impact? Um, probably both. I mostly talk in my head. But I just like, I don't even really, I don't even explain what I'm thinking. I'm just kind of like, oh, there's a tree. <laughs> this, this hurts. <laughs> That's, Where's dad? Yeah. <laughs> Where's dad? <laughs> yeah. What would it look like to prepare for this kind of a run? Um, probably really in building up your endurance for one, and I think it would help to live in Big Bear just because of the, mm -hmm. the change in altitude, because Ryan Hall actually lived up there, so that's why he was able to do it. Mm -hmm. Not easily, but easier. So I, I don't know how you'd prepare for elevation, maybe just going up there once in a while, but I think you just have to like work through that with your build up and endurance training. That's one, too. Okay. What's that? Can I ask one, too? Oh, we're good. We're good, yeah. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Okay, so Taylor, that was really cool. Thank you. That's cool you guys did that. Um, you talked about regret leading up to it, and then like even probably in it, <laughs> and maybe even after some like in you know looking back. I uh, wish because you you were talk, you're talking about itching to the bone, how you want to go back and conquer that. So, how do you win the war in your mind in that area of like the, overcoming? you know, regret or a negative, you know, negative, negative association? And does it in some way involve God or how does God involve with that? Winning the war in your mind. Well, this verse actually really helps me. I don't know, just like, I found it beginning during quarantine and it's just been kind of my like, I guess life motto, you could say, so, hmm. but Winning the war with regret, that's really hard for me. Like, just, I can be really down on myself sometimes, but my dad's always like, think of the positive when you say something negative. But sometimes that's hard, but yeah. So just being positive in your mind as much as you can. So that God's gonna reward that. Yeah. You're looking forward to the reward. Mm -hmm. That's cool. No question. You did a good job. Yeah, let's get Caleb in the car.